Welcome to the Don't Call Me Skinny podcast. I'm your host, Coach Sarah J with CP Fitness. I'm an online nutrition coach and trainer who tells it like it is. I work with women all over the world through my online programs. Each Wednesday, I drop an episode dissecting diet culture norms to give you the facts and reality of nutrition and fitness and how they fit into your world. The current diet culture needs to be revamped, and I'm here to set it straight. My passion is teaching you how to take control over your nutrition, fitness, and overall mindset with my no BS approach. Please remember that this podcast is for educational purposes only and should never be used as medical advice. If you like what you hear today, I'd love for you to leave a review, a rating, share it with a friend, and as always, please keep coming back for more. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's do it. Hello, happy hump day. Welcome back to Don't Call Me Skinny. Uh, Sarah J here. Super excited to be here with you today. Uh, I officially have a fifth grader who is no longer technically a fifth grader. They did their little promotion thing yesterday. So uh, I don't know how I feel about this besides old, but I officially will be done with elementary school. So if any of you mamas out here uh, finished elementary school either this year or at some point in time, reach out, give me a virtual hug. I could use it for sure. All right, you guys. So early bird pricing still going on through June 18th for Shape Up 360. This is that group coaching program. It's amazing. The link is in the show notes. If you are a person that has 50 plus pounds to lose, this is going to be a great starting place for you. All right, I'm going to teach you exactly how I lost 80 pounds and maintained it for three, four years at this point. And uh, it's going to give you a lot of those tools that I didn't have, unfortunately, that I had to figure out on my own that I struggled with. So I will be in there. We're going to be talking about training, nutrition, stress management, sleep management, all these things that generic programs don't talk about, but are very, very important. So let's also then talk about this topic today, because this is a lot of problems. This is a lot of problems. This is part of the major problem that I see when women come to me, which is they can never make it through the weekend, right? How do I not throw it all away on a Saturday? How do I get through the weekend without going, quote, off the rails, unquote? How do I do these things? How do I still make this work and not lose my shit, essentially? And this used to be me. I used to lose my shit on the weekends. I'm like, oh, it's the weekend. It's absolutely time to go, I don't know, eat all the things in the fucking pantry, clearly, or go out six times during the weekend or eat ice cream all weekend long. Like, this is just what I used to do. And I was a yo-yo dieter. That is part of the yo-yo part is starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping. Start on a Monday, we're done by Saturday. Start on a Monday, done by Saturday. Okay, that is what a yo-yo dieter is. And, you know, I would start my diet and by the time Friday came, I was like, fuck, shit, right? And then I'd have to start over. I'd get stuck in this cycle and then I would just quit. And I'm like, why is it always this hard? Like, why does it have to be this way? Why can I not make it through a weekend? What is wrong with me? Like, I have to be doing something wrong, clearly, right? Like, have you had these thoughts? Like, this is this is normal, I feel like. And it wasn't until I learned the process is forever. The process is forever. It's not just some diet that you start and then like, you know, do for a couple of days and then you're done. And so I always made this shit way harder than it needed to be. The main thing that I used to do is restrict the fuck out of myself. I would restrict myself so much during the week that I never made it to the weekend. I never made it barely even to the weekend, let alone through the weekend, okay? I even just saw a post this morning on Facebook talking about, um, I've heard a lot about the keto diet. Um, Is that like, how does that work for people, right? All I did was say, listen, you need to pick something that's sustainable because if you don't pick something that is sustainable, well, it's not going to work. Like I, like I always talk about my friend who says, 
he is keto six months out of the year. No, that's not real. <laughs> that's not how this process is, okay? And so I would, I would always make stuff harder than it needed to be. I'd always restrict myself so much, so much during the week that I could never make it. And it all makes sense. And sometimes I don't think that we hear this enough. I don't think that you hear this on your journey. Like your thoughts and your feelings and why we do things make sense. We just feel like we're failing because we can't get it done. And so when when you actually start to pull back some layers and pull the lens back and you get this broader scope of what is actually going on, it makes so much more sense. The very first thing, the very first thing that you do when someone says, don't look down, what are you going to do? You're going to look down. Some of y'all might have just looked down. I don't know, right? Maybe. Who knows? But the very first thing, the very first thing, when I used to tell my kids, you better not do that. Mom, don't do that. Don't put that down. Pick that up. Do that. They would always do just the exact opposite I told them to do. That's just how our like how our brain is. It's how it works. It's like, oh, I'm not supposed to look down. Why would I look? Oh shit. That's why when I went rock climbing, I was like, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down. And then you look down because you're like, well, I got to know how high I am. Like I have to know where I'm going to, I'm going to get there, but you don't want to look down because it's scary, but you're like, don't look down. It'll be okay. Everything's fine. That's what I kept telling myself. Don't look down. You'll be fine because you're afraid of heights. It'll be all, everything's okay. It'll be fine until it isn't, until it isn't right. And something I kind of want to touch on really quickly is our filtering system, right? That we have, it's built in for us because, well, our body is smart, right? So here's the deal. You can't eat sugar. You can't eat carbs. You can't have pizza. You're not allowed to eat ice cream. What do you think you're going to want when you're told these things? What, what do you think is the first thing you're like, oh, I can't have pizza? Man, I'm really craving pizza, man man, I'm not allowed to have ice cream. Man, I really want some fucking ice cream. Just a little bit of ice cream. Just a wee bit of ice cream. Just a, just a little bit. That's what's going to end up happening. Everything that you're told not to eat, our body's going to filter through and go, oh, we should eat that thing that we're not allowed to have. Because now it's all we can focus on. And this is what we call the RAS, the reticular activating system. It's mainly known as the RAS though, because it's way easier to say. Okay. And this is something that sits right above the spinal cord. It's about two inches long and it's the width of a pencil. This is where all of your senses come in minus your smell. Your smell goes to the emotion center of your brain. Okay. The rest of them come right through the RAS. And what the RAS actually does is connect your subconscious part of your brain to the conscious part of your brain. Okay. And the, the RES can work in our favor and it can also work not in our favor, okay? But it's essentially just a filter. Can you imagine all the things that go through your head? Think about all the things that are happening around you that you're not paying any attention to. There are millions of things and inputs getting put into our body. And our brain has to tell our body like, hey, that's not important, that's not important, that's not important. Whoa, that's really fucking important. Grab that, grab that, grab that. And so that's what the RAS does. It's a, it's going from that subconscious level to the conscious. That's what it's doing. It's like not important, not important, important. Okay, filter this through, this goes through, you're out. You're, you're gone, you're down there, okay? That's what it does. You can't have pizza. You, you want to know what you're going to see all of? Pizza, everything. Everything you're going to see is fucking pizza. You can't have ice cream. You're not allowed to have carbs. Guess what you're going to do? You're just going to see things with carbs and ice cream. That's all you're, it's going to be like popping up the ice cream store that you drove by, the bread place that you, you know, used to go to, but now you can't. All of a sudden it's like, man, I haven't seen that place or thought about that place in years. Now all of a sudden I can't have carbs and the bread place is popping up everywhere. What the fuck's happening? Okay. But it's just a filter. And the most commonly used example here that I'm going to give you is with vehicles. So if you've ever like bought a car or this even happened last night with my sons while we were shopping, we were talking about transformer cars. And guess what we started seeing? All the cars that are in transformers, the Camaro and all sorts of stuff. Okay. Like all over the place. That's what we started to see. Have you ever like, I oh, mean, I really might like a blue car or a white truck, or a black Jeep, or a Beamer. 
And then all of a sudden you start seeing that car all over on the road. Like you never paid attention to it before, but maybe you had a conversation with it about somebody and now it's at the forefront of the brain. It went from the subconscious into the conscious. And now every time you see a black Jeep or a red truck or a white Beamer or a whatever that you were talking about, that's what you start to see. It's almost like somebody heard you and it was like, oh, here, bink, here's that. Oh, now you see that driving down the road. I mean, and kind of your brain essentially did hear you. So that is what your brain is now going to allow into the filter. It's going to show you all these things. Okay. Or it can also work in a not so great way where we, where things that we want to filter through is great. Things that we don't want to filter through, even though we're thinking about them though. Okay. And this is kind of where some of my clients uh, have, have struggled before. Okay. So maybe you have had an amazing day with food. It's like, man, you nailed your breakfast. You, you nailed your lunch. You said no to this. They, somebody brought in donuts. You're like, not today, Satan. You're not getting with the donuts. Okay. But then you get home and you're like, man, and you see these sour cream and onion bag of potato chips. I don't know about anybody else, but I love them. And you're just like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to have some of those. I'm just going to eat a little bit of them. But then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to keep going with these, uh, these potato chips. Right. And then you're like, man, I'm not, I kind of want, okay. I kind of want that peanut butter cup. I I saw that bag next to the the potato chips. I'm going to go for those peanut butter cups now too. And now all of a sudden you're starting to filter in all these things because like earlier in the day, you're like, I'm not eating that. I can't have that. I'm not having that donut. I'm not doing this. But now you're starting to filter in all these things that you quote unquote can't have and you're focused on it. And it's like, oh, and then what ends up happening is that that's all we focus on. Oh my God. I can't believe I ate all these chips. Oh my God. I can't believe I went back for the peanut butter cups. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Not man. Well, that wasn't a best choice. But, you know, I, I, I didn't eat the donut. So, I'm you know, <laughs> I said no to the donut earlier today. So that's awesome, right? Nobody wants to then focus on the rest of the day. You're not going to focus on the 20 to 30 grams of protein that you had at each meal. You're not going to focus on the fact that you said no to the donut. Or, you know, maybe you said no to the booze. Or maybe, you know, whatever. Maybe you just ate one peanut butter cup instead of the whole bag of them, right? It's filtered out everything else because that's not important right now to you. And it knows it's not important to you. Subconsciously, it brought it into your conscious. And this can really throw an entire weekend way off. If we only ever focus on the bad things, what are we going to get? More bad. If we start looking for the positive things or the good things, what do you think we're going to filter through? What do you think our brain is going to allow in other good things? Okay. That's literally how this is going to work. So when the weekends come and maybe it wasn't our best or we dive into that bag of potato chips, our RAS is going to filter out the rest of the day because you're just going to sit on the couch and all you're going to think about is how bad you did, how bad you were. And that's going to lead to something else. And that's going to lead to something else. And the chips are going to turn into the peanut butter cups. They're going to turn into the bottle of wine. And the whole weekend, according to you, is going to be fucked. You just fucked up the whole weekend. Okay. That's not really the truth. If we focused a little less on the bag of chips, we're like, oh, okay. I'm just going to go ahead and log that if I'm tracking my food, or I'm just going to accept the fact that I came home and got out that bag of chips. The likelihood of that leading to something else or spiraling down or spilling into other days even is very minimal because we're not going to focus on how bad, quote unquote, that was making it through the weekend all goes back to a couple different pieces. And one of them I literally just touched on, giving food power. I did an entire podcast on releasing the power food has. Once we bad food or good food and we're labeling everything, well, now you just gave it power. If you're using food as fuel then the body, then the food has no power over you. But the problem is, is that you have for so long allowed food to determine your mood. You allow it to determine your worth. You allow it to determine if you had a good day, a bad day. I mean, we can say the same thing about the scale, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then this is why we restrict so much and go nuts on the weekend, right? We can change our lives around during the week 
And then we cannot handle the weekend. So we can do restrict, restrict, restrict. But then on the weekends, we have travel or barbecues, pool parties, birthday parties, weddings, showers, all sorts of stuff. Y'all, in September, between end of August and end of September, I have three weddings, my 40th birthday party, back to school, kids starting high school. Like my whole world's gonna be fucked, okay? And I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna live through all that. I'm gonna have to figure out how am I gonna make that all work? What is that gonna look like for me? But knowing that, well, it's just food. Like it's, it's really like, I, if I want a donut, I'm gonna go eat a fucking donut. If I want some ice cream, I'm gonna eat some ice cream. I had ice cream for dinner. I'm not gonna recommend that, but I, that's what I did last week. Had some ice cream, my favorite ice cream I had for dinner because I didn't have an opportunity to get dinner in and I drove by it and I was like, ooh, my RAS said, yes, that is amazing. You should go have that, right? So it's like, I'm gonna have to figure that out. But by taking back the power, it's like, it's just food. It's just food, okay? Something else that we have to work on here is understanding that your weekend should not look a lot different than your week, okay? And maybe you're gonna go out for dinner and maybe you're, you're traveling and I'll touch on traveling in a second, but maybe you're gonna go out for dinner. That doesn't mean the whole day gets to be shit. See, that's where I always fucked up. I was like, I'm going out for dinner. I can definitely have donuts for breakfast, fast food for lunch, and then wherever we head out for dinner with drinks, no big deal. And I would, I would use that as an excuse to make the rest of my day look like shit. That's what I did. Eat your protein, get your fiber in, your veggies, fruits and enjoy your fucking dinner. And this is how my clients make it through the weekend. Plan ahead. Look at the menu. Track it as best you can. I typically have my clients take a photo and if it's something that they don't know how to track or they can't even find something to help track that, I will literally go help them track that food. Okay? It just has to be tracked around 80 to 90%. That's it. That's all re- required. We're not looking for shit to be completely perfect. Now, if you're traveling, I often tell people not to be in a cut or a diet phase during travel time. This is just, you're asking yourself to fail. You're just like, hey, you want to fail? Let me tell you how it's going to happen. You should be on a diet when you go traveling. I have clients right now in Europe. Do you think I'm like, track your food, make sure you eat well, don't eat too many carbs? No, go enjoy. When are you going to Europe again? Probably not anytime soon. So fucking go enjoy it. Fucking go enjoy it. Okay. I tell it, eat around a maintenance, listen to your body's hunger cues, get in some daily movement. Boom. More often than not, my clients lose weight on vacation. This has happened. I'm still dumbfounded. I'm like, yes, I don't know what magic I have, but I'm like, boop, bibbity boppity boop. And they lose weight when they come back. And so this, this expectation that you're not going to travel, that you're not going to go to a barbecue, that you're not going to go out for dinner, it's just fucking unrealistic. So why do you do things that don't allow you to do these things in your life? That's like, are you becoming a hermit and doing absolutely nothing? Probably not. It's probably not happening. Okay. You, you're, you're human. You are going to go interact with people. You should be interacting with people. This is the expectation that we have to set. This is the expectation. We continue to change our lives to make this weight loss thing work instead of the other way around. And then the last thing I'm gonna say here is just each week in my client check-ins, I ask them to tell me, is there something coming up that is going to impact the plan that we have in place? So here's the deal. I'm just gonna say it like it is. Too many of you are just trying to piece some shit together, hoping for the best, and then pissed off when it doesn't work. That is, the, that is the truth. That is the same shit I used to do. Low calorie, go. Shit, that didn't work. Okay, no carbs, go. Shit, that didn't work. I'm just gonna be fat and unhealthy and I don't care. But I did care. I did care because I didn't feel good. So that's all I used to do too. All the things that are important, all of the things in life require planning. All of them. I'm, I, I can't think of anything that really doesn't require some planning, okay? What would that look like? When we build houses, we have plans, structures, we have plans, academics, 
We have plans, vacations. Have you ever gone on a vacation? You're at least knowing where the fuck you're going most of the time. And maybe you've done that like cool penny trick where you like heads and tails and you just start driving, right? But most of us have a vacation, even if not every single detail is planned. It's like, okay, we're going to stop here and that's our destination, right? So we're going to stop here and we're going to stop here and we're going to stop here. And maybe we don't have necessarily any plans to do, but there is a plan. There is some type of a plan, okay? Baking and cooking, there's guidelines, there's recipes for food, even if there isn't, you know, it's like guidelines. It's like, we're not like licking raw chicken, okay? There are kind of quote unquote rules for cooking. Sewing, you have patterns. Almost everything that we do in life requires some fucking kind of plan, except this. You know, this health thing, we're just gonna fucking toss some shit at the wall and say, hopefully I'll get it. Hopefully it'll work. And that's going to be what we do. And, and, and then we're just going to be really angry and mad when it doesn't work. Like shame, guilt, all these kinds of emotions that come with it. But then we wonder why. Well, why didn't that work? Well, what was your plan? Well, I didn't really have a plan. Or the plan that I had didn't make sense for my life. Oh, well, maybe that's where we should start. Give yourself a fucking chance. Give yourself an opportunity to be successful. Give yourself that chance. You don't even give yourself that chance. The moment, I'm telling you right now, this lady that talked about cutting out carbs and asking about keto diet, if she tries keto diet, I'm not trying to be an asshole. The likelihood of that sticking and working is going to be extremely slim. Why? It's clear that she has a shit relationship with food. She doesn't understand her relationship she has with food. It's not fixed. She needs to fix that. She needs to fix a relationship with herself. She's not giving herself an opportunity to be successful. She's not giving herself an opportunity to fucking do the thing. She's just like, how can I lose weight? That's how I can lose weight. I mean, yeah, you're going to lose weight. It's called water, water weight. Cool. Is that, is that like, you want to lose weight or you want to lose fat? Like there's not, they're not the same. So it's like, you're not giving yourself even a, a fighting chance to start this process appropriately. And on that note, if you are that person and I'm talking to you and you are like hearing me and you're going, this is me, this is me, this is fucking me. Hi, my name is Sarah and I have Shape Up 360 and I created this offer especially for you to give yourself a chance, to give yourself an opportunity to understand what it takes to be successful. And I promise you, you're going to be fucking shocked at what that's going to actually look like because it's not what you think it is, okay? So link is in the show notes. Early bird pricing ends June 18th, my mom's birthday. If you want in and you do want in, I will see you there. And I'm excited to be working with you. On that note, I will be crying the rest of the week as my big kids graduate, my little kids graduate, and I'm just gonna be a big ball of sobbing mess. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and, and, Catch you on Friday No Filter. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. And if you like what you heard, please be sure to screenshot and share it with others who may enjoy it too. Don't forget to click the link in the show notes to see the ways that we can work together to start your journey. Always remember that every day is a new day to do better, be better, and begin again.